Um, thank you for calling, Steve. Um, I, um, I've been looking at one or two books. I, I started reading What Does the Bible Really Teach? Oh, yes. Yeah. And got a couple of um, questions about that. Um, and I'm also, um, I was given by um, somebody, um, Revelation, it's Grand Climax at Hand. Right, yeah. So um, I'm kind of looking at those two. Um, yeah. The Revelation book is a bit, um, uh, you, you'd understand what the Revelation book is if you knew what the other things we believed and why from the Bible, you see, but. But, uh, yeah, go ahead, and I'll try and help yeah, you uh, answer your questions anyway. Yes, th I... thank you. Where are you based, by the way? Where's the Where's the Kingdom Hall? Are you near, um, or...? It's uh, in, in Kettering, just off uh, Montague Street, Stamford Road. Yes, OK. Yeah, I do live near Kettering. I, I don't know whereabouts you live. No, I'd be um, a little way away. Yeah, we have uh, several kingdom halls in Peterborough. Yes. Uh, are you that direct direction or? No, um, no, but um, okay. Uh, you're 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 yeah. you're from Kettering. Okay, that's that that's 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 fine. Thank you. Um, well, I, well, I guess the first thing would be. It, it talks in what does the Bible really teach on page thirty one? It says, "Who rules the world?" Yeah. And it says, Jesus, this is paragraph 11, Jesus never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. Um, yeah. It then goes on on page 32. Think about this. Would that offer have been a temptation to Jesus if Satan was not the ruler of these kingdoms? Jesus did not deny that all these worldly governments were Satan's. Um, surely Jesus would have done that. If Satan was not the power behind them. Um, you must remember that when Jesus spoke to Satan in, in Matthew 4 and was offered the kingdoms of this world, that's before yeah. Christ's death, burial and resurrection. Christ Christ defeated Satan by his death, burial and resurrection. The, the situation's quite different um, before and after Christ's death on the tree and his uh, burial and his resurrection from 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 the dead um, because I, I wouldn't believe that you could say now that every government and every religion is is of is is of the devil um, and you could sort of prove that from some Bible verse. I haven't really explained my position very, very well. I mean, the book basically seems to be saying every government, including the British government, is of the devil. Satan Satan um, controls, what, what do you say he controls or he influences? Every single um, government is, is basically of the devil. That seems to be what the book is saying on page 31 and 32. Um, well, the scriptures tell us in that's the case um, because for example um, first the first letter of John um, chapter 5 but right at the end verse 19 mm. it reads we know that we originate with God but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one so from that verse are you saying that that applies to governments that verse um, John is talking about governments there. Every every governmental organisation is. You saying that's what that refers to, or does that apply to every single human being on earth, or what? Um, well, the world is influenced by Satan and the demons. Um, that's why in Revelation chapter twelve it talks about Satan the devil being restricted uh, to the earth. Um, right. So Jesus also spoke um, in John. I think it's uh, verse uh, chapter seventeen. Um, offhand, I uh, can't recall that quickly to mind. But um, it, he prayed for. Um, he said, 
that we should be no part of the world. Um, so early, the early Christians weren't any part of the, the world. It's a, it's a, a contrast there drawn between um, the world, all mm -hmm. through the scriptures, the world uh, ruled by Satan and the demons and uh, the early Christians. Uh, would you see yourself as being a part of the world and would you see say the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses and the, all of the Jehovah's Witness people and the religion as being a part of the world? No. So when no. it says... We're that... in the world, we're in the world and we love our neighbour, we do, do good, mm -hmm. um, but we uh, want to share the good news that we have found from the Bible with them. That's why we call from door to door and yes. other forms of compact that we do. So when because it... uh, we, yes. we believe that we're living in what the Bible calls the last days. Um, you see, when you think about what happened in the days of Noah, the Apostle Peter in his letter referred to the days of Noah. You've mentioned so many verses, and I'm, I'm, I can only really deal with one at a time. I'm thinking oh, of 1 John oh, okay. 5, 19 that you mentioned. We know that we are of yeah. God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Yeah. So the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. What do you say that whole world means there? Um, it, those that, those that um, are really not taking God's side. You see, as Christians, we pray for God's kingdom to come. And that's why we do not take part in politics. Um, um, because we want God's government to rule over the earth. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just read. Um, so... We know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Yeah. The previous verse, verse 1 John 5, 18, talks about those who've been born of God. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Well, that means practice sin. as a habit yeah. in, the, in the Greek. But he has been born of God and keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. I would understand this as being contrast between two groups, individuals who've been born of God, and then the yeah. second group, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Yeah. This is a, a different group of people, those people who haven't been born of God, individuals who haven't been born of God. This isn't saying, this isn't some proof text that, that sort of proves that every government is of the devil. You know, the French governments of the devil, the German governments of the devil, the British governments of the devil... Uh, every company is of the devil, you know, Sony Corporation is of the devil, Microsoft is of the devil, that might be true, um, <laughs> uh, the Ford Motor Company is of the devil, and every religion is of the devil, you know, the Baptist Church is of the devil, the Methodist Church is of the devil, the Anglican Church, uh, it, it's simply well, a contrast is, between two want... groups of people, those being born of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, it's simply those who haven't been born of God. We don't. We're not. We're not judges. But we're just. I was just telling you what the scripture says. Yes, I. I know that's what the scripture says. What does the scripture yeah. say? At one John five nineteen, is it a contrast between two groups? We know that we are of God. That's the first group, and the second group, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That's a, a group, who are not born of God. Those people who yeah. haven't been born of God, they're under the sway of the wicked one. Do you think that's a possible interpretation for that verse? Um, uh, well, j j just take, for example, what happened uh, in the Second World War in Germany. Um, who was influencing those people to do what they did? It's beyond... beyond human reasoning that is, well, they were influenced. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really just I can only really focus on one thing at a time. I, am, I do apologise. Um, yeah, right. 1 John 5 19 
Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand. Would you be a part where it says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one? Does that mean you? Let me put it to you like that. Um, it's, it, it says the world. Yeah. So what does that mean? Is that every single human being on earth, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked? Does that mean every single person on earth, without exception, every one no, of us, all, all uh, seven billion people lie under the sway of the wicked one? Is that what that is saying? Um, it is saying, it, it is saying that the world is influenced, and we can be influenced uh, by um, the world around us. We just take fashion, for example. The world around us it, it influences mm. the fashions, and just like many, aren't we? Um, well, I say we. I mean, talking yeah. generally. So, um, I'm not saying oh. that um, you know, every individual is an agent of the devil. That's, that's we're, not, we're not saying that, because each of us have got in free choice, and then we make choices. Um, so, so, so when it says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, that yeah. does that mean yeah. every single person on earth, or does it not mean every single person on earth? For instance, does that phrase, the whole world lie under the sway of the wicked one, would that include you? I could be influenced. All right. Does it include the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses? Would they be included in the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one? Well, everyone can, could be influenced by it, but we make a choice. That we are no part of the world, just as Jesus said. He prayed that... Um, well, but different... <laughs> The same word can have different meanings in different contexts. Different, yeah. You can read the Bible, and unless yeah. you read it in context, the, the same agree. word can I have agree. different meanings in different places. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious because it seems that your book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? Page 31 and 32, it seems to say that every single human government on earth is of the devil. That clearly seems to be what that book is saying. Let me read it to you again. Think about this. Yeah, I, Would that have been a temptation to Jesus if Satan was not the ruler of these kingdoms? Jesus did not deny that all these worldly governments were Satan, Satan's. Surely Jesus yeah. would have done that if Satan were not the power behind them. So it seems to say that Satan yeah. was the ruler of every single kingdom of the world in Matthew 4. Therefore, yeah, he's right. the ruler of every kingdom of the world today. Now, to me, that doesn't follow because Christ died and he resurrected from the grave. Right. right? Um, um, and the Bible talks about him having a kingdom, Colossians 1.13. OK, that was written uh, after oh. Christ's death, burial and res resurrection, the book of Colossians, about... 30 years after yeah. his death, burial, and resurrection. And it talks in Colossians 1.13 about Christ having a kingdom. Yes. He has translated uh, the kingdom us. kingdom of the son of his love. That's, that's right, and that's a past tense. That's Arist in Greek, past tense. He has yeah. translated yeah. us into the kingdom of the son of yeah. his love. So, it's, so those in the Christian congregation, believers, uh, were uh, under his rulership, but the world isn't. Because Satan, the devil, offered all that, as we've said, offered mm. all the world, mm. all the mm. kingdoms of the world, mm. uh, to Jesus Christ to be ruler of that. So who, what does that teach us? It um, teaches us that the one who is controlling the world is Satan, the devil. And now we're living in the last days. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 12 says that he's been restricted to the earth. Right. And uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm finding this rather tough. I do, uh, I do apologise. Um, That's wrong. Because it seems that this book, What Does the Bible Really Teach, is saying that every single government on earth is of the yeah. devil. Therefore, ergo logically, the British and the American governments are also of the devil, which is what I read in Revelation, its grand climax at hand, page 252, 
where it has a seven-headed satanic wild beast with seven heads. Yeah. And yeah. the seventh head of that wild beast, um, the seventh head of that satanic wild beast is called Anglo-America. So all yeah. I'm trying to understand is, is that what the Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching? Are you teaching that whatever the situation in Matthew 4, and I probably wouldn't disagree with you that the kingdoms of the world were under the direction of Satan in Matthew 4. Yeah. Therefore, are you arguing today in 2020 that all the kingdoms of the world are under the influence of Satan? Because there is no Bible verse that says that. There's no scripture that says that, and certainly not 1 John 5.20. Right, okay, because the contrast in 1 John 5.19, sorry, not... 1 John 5, 18 and 19 is simply a contrast between those who've been born of God, individuals, and then the contrast to that, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. If you say the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, and that's every single person on earth, then the passage doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It would also mean that you are under the sway of the wicked one, the devil, as is the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. This 1 John 5, 18 and 19 is about individuals. We know that wh whoever is born of God does not sin. That's individuals who've been born of God. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God. So that's the first group because um, the book of 1 John is an epistle. John's writing to Christians. He's not writing to the devil or, or demons or people are under the con you know control of yeah. satan he's writing to brothers in christ and he's saying yeah. there's this group who've been born of god that's us we know that we're of god that's us the people he's writing to and here's the contrast the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one that's people who haven't been born of god individuals who haven't been born of god this is not some proof text to prove that the british government or the french government or the american government is under the control of the devil or that the Baptist Church or the Methodist Church or the Anglican Church is under the control of the devil. Or that uh, companies of the world like the Ford Motor Company or Sony Corporation or Microsoft or Google are under the control of the devil. It's got nothing to do with governments, nothing to do with companies and nothing to do with religions. It's individuals. Individuals. Are they, are they under the control of God? 1 John 5.18, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. So John is writing this, it's called an epistle. He's writing it to brothers in Christ and he's saying, we know, that's a, yeah. that's a plural, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God, has been, past tense, born of God, keeps himself and the wicked one, that's the devil, does not touch him. Then he yeah. says, he uses a plural, um, first person plural, we know that we are of God. That's a plural. Yeah. So John is yeah. saying himself and the people he's writing to, they've been yeah. born of God. The wicked right. one doesn't touch them. He's, he's talking about yeah. individuals. He's not talking about governments. He's not talking about corporations like Sony Corporation, Ford Corporation. Right. He's not talking about church organizations like the baptist church or the methodist church or the anglican church yeah. we know that we're of god and the whole world here's the contrast that's that's people who haven't been born of god the other people on this planet lies under the sway of the wicked one so it's a contrast between two groups you're either in the first group or born of god or you're in the second group the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one if you yeah. interpret whole world as every single person on earth then that would include you and the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, which doesn't make any sense because clearly the context for whole world is not every single person on earth. It's every single person on earth, excepting with the exception of the first group who've been born of God. So this verse cannot be used as some proof text to prove that the British and the American governments are under the influence or under the control of Satan. That's that's what I'm trying to understand from your literature. I find your literature really interesting. I've spent a lot of time looking at this, and it's it's really, really interesting stuff. But could we agree, 1 John 5, 18 and 19, 
is not a proof text that proves that the British and the American government are under the control of Satan. It's you... not talking about the British and the American government. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Because if it's the whole the world... the relationship of the early Christians to God, in contrast with the world around them. Right. It was the Roman, right. It was right. Roman Empire at the time. Right, OK, OK. So and whole that, world... That basically, that's what it's only saying. Yeah, so whole world does not mean every single person on earth, does it? You can't, you can't use this to say whole world means every single person on earth in the year 2020 is under the control of the devil. Yeah. Because if you well, say that, that would include you and that would include the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, I... Um, I mean, do you believe I, whole world lies yeah, under the, the sway point, of the, the wicked is, one? We're talking about that scripture, but... When you see the relationship of the early Christians and our relationship as Jehovah's Witnesses to the world, mm. um, well, uh, all I'm we're set, we, we are separate from the world. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really for the moment interested in that. Sorry, I forgot your name. What's your name? It's Steve. 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 All I'm trying to understand at the moment is I was told by Jehovah's Witnesses at the Carts that the British and the American government. Every government on earth is under the influence of Satan. Yeah. Is that the position of the Jehovah's Witnesses? That seems to be what you teach in your literature. Because when it says, who rules this world, on page 31, paragraph 11, Jesus yeah. never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. And they interpreted that, that every single government on earth is under the control of Satan. Yeah. Right? I don't well, believe the, there's... The Bible thinks that this world is going to come to an end. Going to be destroyed. Well, yep. And when you think about in the days of Noah, I know I go back to that, but it's just the contrast that, that happened then. There was just a small group that survived, and, yep. and the world at that time drowned. Yep. And but, okay, but there's... the Bible says we're living at the last day. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the last days, and I believe in the last days. I believe yeah. that there will be a battle of Armageddon. I believe that, that most people will die. I believe that you don't need to convince me on something that I think we probably fully agree on. The, the only Who's thing I'm interested in... in the battle? Pardon? Who's going to be involved in the battle of Armageddon? I know about that. I, I have no problem. I'm sure we we agree on that. Um, yeah. so the is, the is only the thing... Government going to remain after the battle of Armageddon? The only thing I'm interested in is the the claim that every government on the earth in the year 2020, including the British and the American governments, are under the control of Satan, which seems to be what this book is saying on page 31 and 32, as well as the book Revelation, its grand climax at hand on page 252. It's got a picture at the bottom of the page of the, uh, well, it t talks about the seven, the seven heads of the satanic wild beast, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome, all biblical scholars would really agree on the identity of those six heads. What I don't agree with and what I'm not happy with is the seventh head, Anglo-America. It's got at the picture of the bottom of the page, page 252, a picture of the American flag next to a picture of the Statue of Liberty and the British flag next to the Houses of Parliament. So I'm, I'm happy to talk about other things, but for the moment, all I'm really interested in, I'm focused on one thing. Is your literature saying that every single government on earth in the year 2020 is under the influence of the devil, including the British and the American governments? That's, that's all I'm interested in at the moment, not interested in anything else. Um, what do you think? No, I'm asking you a question. You're asking me a question back. Yeah. Because... Um... Are they under the influence of God? Are they part of... I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking a question. There is no Bible yeah. verse. Let's just take the British government. Forget about America. OK, let's take the British government. Is the British government, including the head, the office of the head of state of the British government, which is the crown, are they under the influence of the devil? Now, I've been told that by Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they have reasoned that every government on earth in Matthew 4 was under the control right. of the devil. Therefore, right. ergo, 2,000 years later, in the year 2020, every government yeah. 
is under the control of the devil 20 years later. Now, there is no Bible verse that says that. Okay, I'm, there is no I'm, Bible verse I'm, that you can pull out of the Bible that says that. Yeah. But the first thing is, yeah. is that what you are teaching? Are you teaching that the British government, including the crown, are under the influence of the devil? I've been told that by several Jehovah's Witnesses. It seems to be, is that your official position? I'm not an, I'm not an official. I'm a... Um, a believer in right. The, what does your literature state? Yeah, uh, that's what it states, and that is what I believe. What? What? That, that the whole world is under the influence of Satan. The devil. But, but you're quoting one John oh, five nineteen. Oh, one John yeah. five nineteen, as I think we've established, has got nothing to do with governments. John, when he wrote this epistle. He's writing to individual Christian believers. He's not writing to the Roman government. He's not writing to the government of Gaul, which is the ancient name for France. He's not writing to the yeah. government of Britain. He's not writing to the Chinese government or the Japanese government. Okay? It's an epistle. Yeah. An epistle is a letter written to a church, and a church is a body of yeah. believers. 1 John 5, 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. When it says born of God, it's talking about Christians because he uses a first person plural to identify himself with those people who he's writing to. We know that whoever is born of God. Uh, then he says in 1 John five nineteen, we know that we are of God. Now, we know is a first person plural. And he's identifying himself as the subject there together with his readers. Christians, yeah. we know that we're of God. Why? Because we've been born of God. And then he says, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That's a contrast. The second yeah. group are people who haven't been born of God. Now, it is, yeah. not, it is only possible for individuals to be born of God. Governments aren't born of God. OK, I know the phrase born again is used by some people in John three. It's actually more correctly rendered born from above. But here it's referred to as born of God. The people who are born of God or born again are individuals. You cannot have governments being born of God. OK, there's no verse where Jesus says, I'm talking to the, you know, uh, the government of Gaul. The government of Gaul must be born again or born okay. from above. There's, there's no verse in the Bible where companies such as the Sony Corporation or Microsoft or Google or the Ford Motor Company or the Rolls-Royce Company are told to be born again or born from above. It's only individuals. So 1 John 5, 18 and 19, we know that we are of God. That's the first group. The second group, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, has got nothing to do with governments. Nothing to do with corporations, businesses. Yeah. It's individuals. Individuals are one of two groups. They're either born of God or they're not born of God. And that's all it's saying. Now, that's got nothing, nothing whatsoever to do with the British government. Stop quoting the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one and applying it to the British government because it doesn't. So, sorry, I do apologise, Steve, but... Um... It's not. Well, which, um, the, I've just looked up now, John 17, verse 15, it says, I do, I do not request that you take them out of the world, but you watch over them because of the wicked one. They are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. Sanctify them by means of the truth. Your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. And I am sanctifying myself in their behalf so that they also may be sanctified by means of truth. Yeah. So um, that dialogue goes on, actually. But yes. that, that basically is a relationship of true Christians yeah. to the world. Yeah, the word, so, yes, um, yes. The, I, yes the, but the, there are also false Christians, ones... Yeah. When you look at the record of Christian, Christendom, yes. it is not a reflection of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Well, you said several things there. 
I do not pray, verse 15, John 17, verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you All should right. keep them from the evil one. The word them is referring to individuals. And you, he's, he's praying to his father, but them, it's a reference to individuals. He's not talking about governments. Okay, they are not of the world. They is a reference to individuals. Just as in 1 John 5, 18, 18 and 19, we know that we're of God. That's individuals who've been born of God. And then the second group, the whole world lies on the sway of the wicked one. That's another reference to individuals. So none of these two verses, 1 John 5, 19 and John 17, 15, proves that the British government is of the devil, which I've been told by Jehovah's Witnesses. That the British government is of the devil, and I'm, I, you know, no offence to you, Steve. You seem a really nice guy, but I'm kind of offended at that, mate, because they have been unable to prove to me from the Bible that the British government is of the devil, and that is what your literature is saying, isn't it? It's saying. Well, yes, yeah, but you you agree that the previous world powers, um, Greece, Rome, Egypt, and uh, right, yeah. Um, are fulfilled Bible prophecy and they are not pleasing God, are they? So when did that march of the world powers finish? Um, what thing? But it, it's the same, but time's gone on. It's, the politics and governments of this world are still condemned by God. No, 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 no. It's got, it's got nothing to do the verses we've been looking at have got nothing to do with politics and governments. There's no verse in the Bible which says the British government right. and the American government are of the devil. Most biblical yeah. scholars would agree with the identity of the first six heads of the, the beast in, in, um, identified in the book of Revelation. I think it's, is it Revelation 17, 9 and 10? Uh, let's have a quick look. Um, uh, but the the seven, the six the first six heads being being basically nations which persecute God peop God's people uh, yeah p people would agree scholars would agree uh, most scholars would agree yeah that Egypt Assyria Babylon Medo Persia Greece and Rome no problem with that because although we're dealing with biblical symbolism and it's rather difficult we can we can we can work out from John seventeen nine and ten that. Yeah, that's the identity of the first six heads. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short season. So you have seven heads identified. Five have fallen, that's five empires which persecute yeah. God's people, right? Yeah. One is, that's the sixth head. And that has to be Rome. John, John, who wrote the book of Revelation, is not identifying yeah, the yeah, Inca yeah. civilization as the sixth head yeah. or the Japanese government no, no. as the sixth head no, or the Chinese one, but... government. It's obviously Rome. Yeah. Everyone agrees on that. The other yeah. has not yet come. Right? Yeah. Now, no biblical scholar, to my knowledge, has ever identified, no reputable, competent biblical scholar has ever identified Anglo-America as the seventh head. There have been crazy groups who take a historicist position. Historicism is a uh, a way of interpreting the book of Revelation. And uh, historicists for about 200 years have said, well, firstly, it was Napoleon who was the seventh head. Because, you see, the seventh head re refers to this ten, ten nation kingdom out of which the eighth head comes, and the eighth head is the the known as the beast or the anti the, the Hollywood movies call him the Antichrist, but his proper name is the beast. So the seventh and the eighth head are really one. It's a confederation of ten kings. It hasn't yet happened, uh, but the beast or the Antichrist is connected to. He's one of those ten heads, but then then he rules over them and he gains dominance over them. He becomes the. Um, eighth head and he will only continue a short season because then you have the battle of armageddon and christ christ defeats him at the battle of armageddon yeah. but it's a reference yeah. to the antichrist now throughout the last 200 years crazy people called historicists have interpreted the seventh head as firstly napoleon 
Then a hundred years ago in the First World War, it was Kaiser Wilhelm, who was the German leader, the German yeah. Kaiser. Uh, then in the 1930s, it was Mussolini. Uh, then in the Second World War, it was Hitler. And the Bible talks about the beast or Antichrist having a, a false prophet who works with him. So at that time, um, some groups then said, no, Mussolini's not, not the beast. It's Hitler who's the beast and Mussolini's the false prophet. Um, then in the 1950s, it was Stalin and communism. Uh, that was the seventh head. Then in the 1970s, you had a very famous book called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And they said it was the European Economic Community, also known today as the EU or European Union. Um, and then from about the 1990s onwards, you had a variety of Islamic leaders who've been identified as the seventh head, such as Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden and so on. Oh, Ayatollah Khomeini was identified also. Um, so just making a claim doesn't mean it's true because lots of different people and lots of different religious groups are making a claim. Now, Steve, I'm only interested in one thing. I live in Britain and I'm a loyal citizen of the crown. Looking, I'm looking at page 252 where it identifies the seventh head as Anglo-America, it's got a picture of the American flag next to the Statue of Liberty and the British flag next to the Houses of Parliament. Having read your other book, page 31 and page 32 of What Does the Bible Really Teach, yeah. where it clearly says every government on earth is of the devil. Yeah. All right, no doubt at all about that. Yeah. It says every government on earth is of the devil. What the literature is really saying is that the British government, including the crown, is ruled by the influence of the devil, which I've been told by Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'm, I'm kind of a bit shocked at that, you see. So that's my question. That's what I'm focusing on. Why does your literature say that the British government, and I live in Britain, I'm a loyal subject of the crown. Why does your literature say that the British government, including the crown, is under the influence of the devil? Because there's no Bible verse which says that. There's no Bible verse which says the seventh head of the satanic wild beast is Anglo-America. You can read that into the Bible. You know, the, you speak to a Mormon, they'll talk to you for hours. They'll talk and talk and talk. And the Seventh-day Adventists will talk and talk and talk. And the Christadelphians will talk and talk and talk. But all they're doing is reading stuff into the Bible, which the Bible doesn't say. The Bible never says Anglo-America is the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. And nor does the Bible say anywhere in the Bible that the British and the American governments are run by the influence of Satan. I might disagree with some of the policies done by the British and the American governments. Yeah, so, uh, so you believe in Satan, the devil. Pardon? You believe in Satan, the devil. Yes, but I don't have a, a theology that's uh, Satan-centric where I focus all the time on Satan, 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 Satan. I focus on Christ because Christ defeated Satan through his death, burial and resurrection. When Christ rose from the grave, he overcame the world, John sixteen thirty three. So because Christ the overcame the, the world, Satan no longer runs all the... Na if, if Satan did rule all the nations of the world in Matthew 4, he no longer ran them. He no longer ran the whole shebang after Christ's yeah. death, burial and resurrection because Christ overcame the world and he defeated Satan by his resurrection. So we don't need to have a theology that's Satan-centric. I mean, could I just ask you straight, Steve, is the literature saying that the British and the American governments, Anglo-America, being the seventh head of the satanic wild beast, is under the influence of the devil? But the, no, the whole the where, where what are you quoting? The Bible never said what, when you say the whole world, you're going back to yeah. one John five okay. nineteen. Right. One John okay. five nineteen, as we've established, yeah. has got nothing to do with governments. That's not a proof text that you can quote to prove that every government of the world in the year twenty twenty is run by Satan. Now, Satan the devil didn't cease operating at Jesus' death. Pardon. Satan the devil didn't cease operating along with the wicked angels that are with him, they're called the demons. He continued to have influence on mankind. Yeah, I, I, I agreed. Ag agreed. 
does Satan run the British and the American governments or are the British and the American governments under the influence of Satan? Um, what, you're, what you're saying is, um, you see, there are sincere individuals in all types of walks of life, including politics. And until the end of the system when Jesus Christ comes with his angels and and judges mankind, um, they still have a, a choice. There's a, a choice that we all have to make. Agreed, but agreed. But my, as... Agreed, but my question is, does Satan run or control or influence the British and the American governments? You see, it's, it's, it's very difficult if if you can't give me a straight answer and just tell me that this is what your literature is saying. It's almost impossible yeah. to have a dialogue with you because you, you can't give me a, 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 a straight answer. Yeah. Now, the reason <laughs> I, is because I want to give you a, a scriptural answer, which um, yeah. I need to um, do look up some more um, points. Yeah. And then I will come back to you okay. on this answer. Okay, okay Steve. Because um, it deserves a proper answer. Yes. And the reason, and the reason we've come to this conclusion about uh, the governments of the world. Well, you understand, I'm not interested in the governments of the world. I'm interested oh, in the British. I live in Britain, so it's specifically the British yeah. government that I'm specifically interested in. You because see, um, if I were to become a Jehovah's Witness, I'd have to obey the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, no, are you telling me that as a British citizen living in Britain, I must right. be disloyal to the Crown because I believe that the British no. government and the Crown of England no. as an institution no. is under the influence no. of the devil? Uh, our, relationship, our relationship with government is just as Jesus spoke to those that tried to trick Jesus just before his death. And he's, Jesus Christ said, he said, he picked up a coin. With, uh, yes, I'm, 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 I'm fully, I'm fully aware of that. But you're yeah, missing but the point. He says, pay to Caesar what Caesar's and what's, and God's, which are God's. Now, I'm just going to read you, I've just looked up at Romans 13. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm aware, I'm aware, but is the literature saying that Satan runs the British and the American governments, including the presidency of the United States, which is the head of the American government, and the crown, which is the head of the British government? It's a yeah. straightforward question. If you can't give me a straightforward answer, um, you know... Yeah, um, I answer, I've answered that. And what, I said, what, yes. what, so Satan does run the British government, including the crown? Yeah. He That's... influences all governments. Including the British now, government and the head of the British government, which is the British Crown. You're saying that... Why not? Why not? So you're saying that Satan influences why, the why Crown? Doesn't he, why doesn't he influence them? So you're saying that... the. Crown, that's Her Majesty the yeah. Queen, that's kind of disrespectful to a dear lady. I mean, she's so I'm loyal to not, this country. Not disrespectful to the Queen. But you've just um, said that she, that the Crown is influenced by Satan. Uh, it's kind of a bit yeah. disrespectful, Steve, you see. I'm, I'm not very happy with the... We are, we are respectful of the Queen. I've just actually... Right. Um, I just actually, uh, we don't, we don't worship the, the the state, the flag, right? We obey the laws because you believe laws. that every country is under the influence of the devil. That's why you don't salute no, the flag. Not. That's why you don't become Wouldn't a policeman, and that's why you don't do jury service because you believe every government on earth is is under the oh, influence of the devil. Hold on. Is something that each individual Jehovah's Witness, we are Christian, and um, makes a personal decision on. So, now, how many Jehovah's Witnesses are policemen? There have been. No, t name some Jehovah's Witnesses today who are policemen. To, there are 
things that, that, that now, that, um, if it, to carry arms, for example, we couldn't do that because um, he that picks up the sword will die by the sword. No, the real reason is you don't become policeman because you believe that when you wear a police uniform, it has E2R on it. If you go to court, there's a picture of the crown above the judge with E2R. E2R means Elizabeth II reigns. But you've just said that this dear lady no, I didn't rules say that. I didn't say by that the power of the devil, the devil or by he the influence not, of the devil. Because you... Not, and, right, so so does she or does she no, not? I, can you, I just... But, Steve, I, does she or does she not rule by the power of the devil? Because if every government on earth, you said... I, I want to just state to you our position. Yeah. And that is with regard to um, uh, all governments. And it's Romans chapter Yes, 13. I know. I know. We to obey all governments. Yeah. I understand it. But what I'm asking you is your opinion on where these governments get their power or their authority from. And it seems that they your are, literature yeah, is I saying that, that they... All of them get their all of them get their no, authority no. from the devil. Let, it, hear me out. Yeah, sure. Every time I try answering this, yeah, yeah. Anyone who takes a stand against the authority is making taking a stand against the arrangement of God, because the authorities have been a, a um, stand in those positions um, with. God's and we obey the law as far as it goes. But where it conflicts with God's law, we cannot obey that. Of course, um, Romans so, Romans that, thirteen we, verses one to five. Yeah. I would agree with you. Um, we're to and, obey the government, but if the government wants to put Jews in in gas ovens and put Jewish Jewish families, men, women and children, in gas ovens in Auschwitz, then we're not to do that because that's contrary to the teaching of God. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Yeah. But what I'm interested yeah. in, your literature is saying that fundamentally the British and the American governments are of the devil. They're the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. If I were to become a Jehovah's Witness, I would be required to have a position that the British and the American governments are of the devil. That, therefore, I do not salute the flag. I do not salute Her Majesty the Queen. Um, uh, I do not become a policeman. I do not serve on a jury because the British police and the British government and the British courts get their power and their authority from the, from the monarch, from Her Majesty the Queen. And your literature is clearly uh, saying that the British and the American governments, including the head of state, which is the presidency of the US and the British crown, get their authority from the devil because they're the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. I mean, that's what you're... You're, 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 you're twisting what, what, uh, what really is the case. Right. We are well, very well, respectful of the Queen. Yes, I, I, I'm and not asking about... The flag. And the, the point is, um, we don't salute the flag because we feel it's idolatry. It's an emblem. It's an act of worship to an emblem. No, 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 because no you, you believe that every government is of the devil. The flag represents that government and every government is controlled by, 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 by Satan. But why do you have on page 252 of the Revelation book a picture of the Statue of Liberty next to yeah. the American flag, Houses of Parliament yeah. next to the British flag, the words Anglo-America, you're saying that the British and the American government are the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. It's a... Yes, they are. are... Pardon? We are saying that, yes. So if the British and the American governments are the seventh head of the satanic wild beast, that means that they are under the influence of the devil, according to your literature. Well, we... Well, how could they be? How could they be anything other than under the influence of Satan if they're the seventh head of the satanic wild beast? <laughs> well, you've come to the conclusion yourself. But that's what the literature is saying, isn't it? Yeah. 
Right. So therefore, but the head of state we're, we're... of both countries are also under the influence of the devil. You can't say president, the office of the president of the US is exempt and the crown of England is exempt. The presidency of the US and the crown of Britain are the head of those two governments. So as you just said, the Anglo-American government is under the influence of Satan. So too must be the office of the American presidency. I'm not talking about the person, the individual. I'm referring to the office and the crown of Britain, the monarch. You're saying both of these two offices are also under the control of the devil. That's that's what well, your literature is saying. Yeah, I'm not talking about individuals. I know, I've just said that. We're not talking about individuals. We're talking about the office of the presidency of the United States. Yeah. And we're talking about they the stand, office of the Crown of Britain. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are stand in a relative position but by permission of God. Pardon? They stand in their posi relative position in, in with God's permission. So the, um, So the seventh head of the satanic wild beast yeah. is in its position because of God. God's put the... Yeah. <laughs> Do you want God's kingdom to rule over the earth? How can the British and the American government be under the influence of Satan? And yet, um, I mean, every government on earth is there because God, God permits them to be yeah. there. God has instituted the, the, the um, governments of the world. But I'm asking about the authority of the British and the American government. You said earlier that they have their influence by the devil. The scriptures say that the whole world is under the Satan. Now, so you're back to 1 John five nineteen. We know that we're of God. John speaking in his epistle to individual Christians, uh, yeah. we we know and is I a first read. person plural. He's talking about individuals. When he says the whole world yeah. lies on the sway of the wicked one, he's not referring to governmental yeah. organisations. He's referring okay. to individuals who haven't been born of oh, God. Yeah. This has got nothing to yeah. do with the British government. You can't keep harking back to this verse as some proof text. No, we're not. If you go to uh, Matthew 17, I read you there. No, John's, John, John 17. John 17, verse 15. That's again a reference to individuals. You, you can't read governments in, into there. You see, what, what concerns me, Steve, is that your literature is saying that if I were to become a Jehovah's Witness, I have to take the position that the British and the American governments, including the head of state of Britain and America, that's the crown of Britain and the presidency of the United States, I'm not referring to individuals, I'm referring to the yeah. office, are under yeah. the influence of the devil. We're not trying to change the world. The world is as it is. We are we are helping. We want. We're looking for people that want to who want to make a choice for God's kingdom to rule over them. And Daniel chapter. Uh, God's kingdom is the Watchtower four, Bible and Tract Society. The, the, the of, by by God's kingdom, you mean the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Because the Watchtower for the 15th of November 1981, page 21, says, And while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for salvation. So there's no salvation outside of Jehovah's Organization. What you have is, is the Watchtower Society demonizing every government on earth, including the British and the American governments, and it's demonizing the presidency of yeah. the United States and it's demonizing the crown of Great Britain, which is the monarch, no. the office of the monarch and the office of the president of the United no, States. We are, we're not demonizing that. We're just stating that. That they're under the influence of the that's devil. How, that's how the world is. And you, you stated um, Napoleon. Yeah. Um, some said Mussolini. Um, yeah. So uh, what about those people that said that? Well, they were they were raving. They, they they were people usually from Adventist types type groups. The the Watchtower Bible and Society came out of uh, an Adventist group. Um, I'm not an Adventist. Um, you, you know, the seventh head is clearly a reference to something that's still future, an alliance of ten kingdoms, of which the Antichrist will come out of, and the Antichrist is the eighth king. Your book on page 254, yeah, paragraph 10, 
says, notice that the scarlet coloured wild beast is itself also an eighth king. Thus, the United Nations is designed to look like a world government. So your book basically says that the United Nations is the eighth king who comes out of Anglo-America. Um, and it's referring yeah. to, it refers to on page 253, that. the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, which led to the setup of the League of Nations in 1920. Yeah. The League of Nations became, I think it was 1945, it, it then changed and became yeah. the United Nations. You, yeah, you're well, demonizing the also the United Nations and saying the United Nations is also under the influence of Satan because it's the eighth head of the satanic wild beast. Yes. Right, but you joined the United Nations. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society were exposed in the Guardian newspaper of the 8th of October 2001 when the Guardian pointed out that you published this book, Revelation, its grand climax at hand in 1988. But four years later, in 1992, you joined the United Nations. So this book, Revelation, its grand climax at hand, demonizes the UN. And then you join the UN four years later. You took out NGO membership. You became a member of the UN. We are not members of the United Nations. You joined the UN in 1992. You're exposed by The Guardian on the 8th of October 2001. You then left the very next day on the 9th of October 2001. You're still connected to the UN today indirectly. The Watchtower has lots of sub-corporations. And one of them is the, 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 the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. That's one of the sub-companies under the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. They've got about a hundred smaller not, companies, and this small. We're not companies. Pardon. We're not. We're not commercial. We're not companies. But you have to have some legal framework of responsibility in the law, in the in the world, don't you? Who is responsible? So yeah. you form a society or uh, um, some form of organisation to um, legally carry out your work. Yeah. That's why but, we're formed. But, but, but Steve, we've never been part of the United Nations. Yes, you joined the United Nations in 1992 to comply with your NGO, that means non-governmental organisation membership, which you, you had to com comply with it. What you did, what the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society did, was to um, um, publish, usually in the Awake magazine, usually twice a year, Articles which supported the United Nations, because to be an NGO member of the United Nations, you have to, on an annual basis, um, support the, the aims of the United Nations. Um, and you, you did that by, by publishing articles in the Awake magazine which supported the aims and the ideals of the United Nations. You did that for nine years, because you were members for nine years, from... Um, 1992 until 2001 when the Guardian um, published a Guardian newspaper in London exposed the fact that basically you were being a the, the watchtower was being rather hypocritical because it was saying the UN is of the devil uh, but it joined the UN you yeah. see um, and in facts for shareholders published in 1917 I'm looking at page two it says the Watchtower Society is not a religious society for public worship, such as a church, but is a business corporation, not for profit. And that statutes is, uh, requiring religious corporations of that nature. Pardon? That, is for the, that was set up for the production of uh, Bible literature and Bibles. Yes, yes. Well, that's the main corporation, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. The Watchtower Society is not a religious society for public worship, such as a church, but is a business corporation, not for profit. Um, they are still are members. They're, they're still connected to the United Nations today, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Not directly, yeah. but through a sub-corporation, because yeah. they have about a hundred smaller corporations, and one of those is the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, and they're members yeah. of what's called OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which is uh, uh, an intergovernmental organization made up of parliamentarians across Europe, 
these parliamentarians from 50 parliaments across Europe meet a couple of times a year um, and various religious groups have joined them such as Scientology, um, the, European the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses which is a sub-corporation of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Scientologists have joined and various uh, ultra-Orthodox Jewish groups have joined. And what they're trying to do is to work with the parliamentarians by lobbying them to um, bring in basically more political correctness across Europe. So what Scientologists and Jehovah's Witnesses want to do is basically make disagreeing with your religion because Scientologists have carts. Um, I'm speaking to you from Plymouth um, and here the Scientologists used to go out into the street in central Plymouth with their carts. What they're trying to do is to make any disagreement with them a, a hate crime similar to Islamophobia. So if you meet a Jehovah's Witness or a Scientologist through OSCE, these groups are trying to say, look, anyone who disagrees with us needs to go to prison. It's a criminal you, offence. It's a, it's a hate crime yeah. to disagree with us. Okay. So what you, um, what's your aim in life? Um, to to uh, find the truth? To serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who I believe physically, bodily, literally rose from the grave. I believe it was a literal, physical, bodily resurrection. I don't believe Christ was changed into a spirit creature at his resurrection. I don't believe he's the Archangel Michael. Um, when Paul saw him on the Damascus Road, he said, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus didn't say, Oh, I'm the Archangel Michael, whom you are persecuting. No, no, no. He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And when he saw Thomas, he showed Thomas the marks in his hands and in his sides. If Jesus rose as a spirit creature and no longer had a physical body, why would Jesus show the marks of crucifixion if Jesus was now a, a spirit creature and not, a, a, a not um, somebody who had risen from the grave in his now glorified human body? So I believe in Christ's literal, physical, bodily resurrection from the grave. I believe in Christ's um, literal... Uh, oh. bodily second 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 coming to defeat Satan at Armageddon, which is a still future yeah. event. Steve, yeah. Yeah. Well, um I think this conversation has gone far enough. Do you know I've spoken to many other Jehovah's Witnesses uh and they all say the same thing. I think this conversation has gone far enough. <laughs> um but they never answer any questions. Very sad. Okay, well, look, thank you very much for your time, Steve. I'm extremely grateful to you, sir. Good night. Okay, good night.